What what and, I noticed, Russ, that you did a, you're doing a series or you did a, a show on death. That's the yeah. most recent thing you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So what? Because a lot of people have this idea that well, you know, I'll die and I'll just kind of move on to another realm, or it'll be just be black and or nothing, or if there's something, I you know, it can't be what the Christians say, this hellfire brimstone kind of lake of fire. So. You know, they don't, they can't fathom that exactly. They're not afraid of it anyway. Yeah. But what is, why is death, is death, is that it? That's the final act in our existence? I mean, what about people that are lived to be three years old and die? Well, um, part of the issue is, again, uh, where death came from in the beginning. Because we all know okay. that uh, okay. death is kind of a horrendous thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's, people fear it. Uh, I've been by many, many deathbeds uh, as a pastor over the years, and there's and there's a real. Um, I mean, it's a it's a ripping of our human spirit out of our physical body. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about the body when it dies; that it just hardens, and then it finally softens, and then it liquefies, and then it, you know, and then it just decays. I mean, this human uh, is it just a carcass, a skeleton with meat on it? Um, it we're far beyond that. Um, and that's why death is is really um, it's really kind of an enemy to us, and that's how the Bible would portray death: an enemy mm-hmm. that came, intruded. Uh, it's here as an intrusion. We were never meant to do, you know, to die and rot like this in the ground. And, and but that's and what happens Bi- to trees, though. A tree falls over and it dies and rots in the ground. Sure, you're absolutely right. Um, and a tree would be different. Um, you know, a tree would be different from us in the sense, uh, 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 I mean, again, as a human being and, uh, as someone who, you know, lives and breathes, we can, we can, we can challenge that. We can say, okay, we just die and we're annihilated. We don't exist any longer. You know, the weird thing I used to do in these old campus life meetings with kids, we'd have 30, 40, 60, 70 kids in a house packed. We do a subject on this. This is like either the subject of sex or death. It's like this was the two big <laughs> subjects to talk about. Right. And uh, death, they would talk about it, but there's a fear element there, too. Uh, and even the Bible says in, in, in Hebrews 2 about how Satan had the power of death. He was, he's involved with this thing called death. And um, He wants people so we, to go to their death having yeah. renounced God. I know that that's a big, that's a big thing, you know, that, uh, yeah. that he wants to encourage people to do their own thing, to seek their own happiness. Yeah. And and in so doing, they end up doing his bidding because they're going to go to their death having rejected God. Sure. And now, now, why is it important that someone accept God before they die? I mean, why was why why is that? So I'm just thinking about the guy listening late at night, and he's wondering, yeah. you know, he's kind of sneaking in on this broadcast. Why is it so important to get this thing right before? De- is it that we have like a time limit where we're here and we're like being tested? And it's a it's a it's a time limit. You got to get it before you die, or is it a test? Or is it to see if we'll reject God or not? Is that the what's going on here on Earth? I mean, what is? Because obviously, well, um, it's, go ahead, go ahead. Um, it, it's um, it's just the condition. We're in that condition. I mean, that's one thing we can't stop death. Um, even again, if you don't have an accident or something that doesn't shoot you on a sidewalk somewhere, mm-hmm. physically your body, you're going to die. And, and again, the ultimate issue is that um, you know people can look for reasons for it all kinds of places and can't find the answer. God, the Word of God does say the wages of sin is death. There was, a, there was an encounter in the beginning of the human race, and it dealt with this thing of being separated from God. Uh, physical death is here because we have been separated from God and uh we are we are we are we are cut off and uh but now God has in, you know invaded back into us based on the one one single thing God loved us so much I mean when we think of the cross that involved a death but it's the only death that was planned and uh, plotted and, uh, you know, Jesus came to die. And there's a reason to blast apart the finality of death. Um, he came to attack death. And, to, and, to, and that's what the resurrection from the dead is all about. He blasted apart the finality of it. Uh, he, he crushed this, this uh, thing that is called death. 
and uh, there is the offer for indestructible immortality, eternal life. And he was uh, around we were for meant for... to live forever. We are created that way in the beginning. Once we're impacted with the fact that Satan is involved in the psychological side of the fear of death, mm-hmm. that's what the Bible says, and we um, we can't stop it. And the wages, the, the sin issue is what brought it. But forgiveness and the new life um, not only reverses it, but it's just it's just like right now, you know, anybody who's really received the living Christ into the life, the real living Christ into their life, he gives you the spirit of the living God where your human spirit is made alive to God, and there's a inward communication. Uh, you have life. It's eternal. You know that you know that you know that you know. Uh, you will definitely live forever, and you will definitely see the face of God. And when and, and knowing that is an awesome feeling. I have to tell you, you got to try that. Those of you out there who have a doubt, and those of you who are on the path, feeling a bit dry, um, just think about what Russ is saying right now. This this idea that we will just by having Christ within us, we have eternal life right now, this moment. It's incredible. And so there's no worry about, so why do we worry about death if we have eternal life? <laughs> <laughs> well, once we have the gift, once we know, and that involves a part of it. I mean, gosh, the other side of this, you know, I never knew uh, prior to this, uh, you know, I, I mean, I believe there was a God up and out there somewhere, but I definitely knew the difference. I wasn't in touch. Um, I didn't know him. I didn't know his presence, didn't know his power. And that's the issue. You know, when we're going along in life and we're just searching, 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 and and then open to anything, the difficulty now, and even the Bible prophetically, you know, told that, it, you know, in days that we're living, Zeph, and the days that are coming, uh, even a broader um, clash spiritually is coming. And there's a lot of spirits out there that are guiding, like you said, mm-hmm. in the drug world, into suicide, into all, all kinds of stuff, experiences. And people can have experiences. There's, you know, there's no question. You can have spiritual experiences. Just simply question, where did this come from? Where is it leading me? Yeah, most of them lead to nowhere because of the fact that experience is, is if, experiencing Christ is a daily experience, though. I mean, it is a full experience beyond that which you're given with, say, drugs or meditation. Meditation, uh, say, for example, Buddhist meditation, is really go, the goal is to extinguish the mind and achieve something like Satori or Nirvana. And so it becomes a very selfish pursuit. And so you're all wrapped up with yourself all the time. I can't think of a more miserable place to be. And a lot of the Buddhists I knew were so miserable. Not, you know, they would do the love and light thing for a while, but then that would wear off. And they're just stuck with their karma. <laughs> you know, you're just a lousy, you see yourself in the mirror and it doesn't look so hot. And self-improvement isn't going to do it for you. That's, but, but they really want to be initiated into something so that they leave the old life behind and they have a new life, and they can leave that old, crummy guy behind and start being a good person. That's what people are looking for. Well, that's exactly what I was... I mean, that's part of uh, what I was looking for when I was into into that Buddhism style that I was into. Um, and that's part of... You know, I thought this was kind of the track, and that I was becoming spiritual. You know, I told people that. I said, man, I'm spiritual now. And they'd, they'd ask me questions or whatever. But... I, I, you know, if if God came up, well, God was out there, um, but there was no connection between the God of the universe and my so-called spirituality that I had. Um, and it wasn't until this, you know, I was impacted by this guy that had the spirit of the living God, the presence of God in him when he when he shared that Jesus, you know, died and rose and who he was and how, you know. Um, there's power in that message. There's a presence. And so when we hear, um, and that's the challenge, you know, listen. Because one thing I know now is that it's true. God has been seeking us all the days of our life. He's been looking and searching and looking how to get his message to us. Um, he's the great seeker, and he wants us. Uh, that's... 
you know, Zeph, I, I've had people in life that uh, care and, and so forth, but uh, what I know to this very day, and I think you do, is that is that the whole motivation of God is that He literally is the most relational being. He loves us and wants us and uh, has made a way for us to come right into His arms. Yeah, he's he's uh, uh, a lot of people get kind of hung up on this. Uh, you know, I'm so evil, I don't deserve it. Mm. And I tell them, you know, that's that that's overblown a little bit. I mean, yes, we we've 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 inherited sin. We've inherited, you know, a kind of do what thou wilt mentality in the world. You know, we do what we want to do, and our flesh is, you know, if you think if you think you're more powerful than your flesh, just try to stop doing some habit that you do. Just decide tomorrow you're going to stop it. And see how long it takes you to actually see if you can do it. It's not easy. You know, most people put it off. Or, you know, the flesh is powerful, in other words. But they're told, I don't, des- it's undeserved grace. It's like, no. And at the same moment, they say, well, he made us in his likeness and image. So you can't have it both ways. That we, he made us in likeness and image, but we're lousy. And then, the, but, but I just say this, God don't make no junk, first of all. He made us in his likeness and image so he could seek us for his purpose. And what people have the most trouble with, and I think this is more accurate than like I'm lousy and but God saved me and boy I don't deserve you know that's one way to go. I mean that's a very limited way if that's all you see. But then further to that is this idea that um, He made us in His likeness and image, and He made us in other words for His purpose, for His purpose, and and. That is the thing. When people finally get that, it becomes a lot easier. It becomes like, oh, I get it. He made me for his purpose so that when he gets me, then I'm fulfilling something he wants to do. Not, it's got nothing to do with me doing my own thing and finding my nirvana. It's got to do with my nirvana is his, his will is my will. I get it now. Well, exactly. And that's the, you know, that's the, that's the neat thing because we don't know about our origins. The origin is not that we came out of nothing. It's not the the stinking aliens, finite, (laughs) running around little ships that that created us. Tin cans. This is a living God that we were made. That's why we search for significance. That's why we, you know, we were made as the apex of God's creation. And that's the other side of the message, that we are um, incredibly, we were made in majesty and and sacredness, uh, but by a living personal being that had fellowship. And we were in that fellowship but we know something went wrong. Uh, yeah. Something went wrong. The plug, the plug was pulled, and um, and we were no longer, um, you know, alive to God. Something happened, and and the reality is there is evil. There is real evil uh, that has entered the world. Uh, then when we finally come to our senses, as if we're willing to say, you know what, I, I'm the one that did the wrong. I'm. I'm in the wrong. I'm messed up, and I can't save myself. I can't change myself. Ultimately, um, I can't. I can't plug myself back into God. Now, some people get very angry at God because of that. They say, "Well, well, you know," and they they all the more turn against Him because they don't like the reality they're faced with, and they blame God. 